cafes of Hollywood. It may disappoint you to learn that cafe life, as it is commonly interpreted, is unknown in Hollywood. Visitors avid of seeing the wildlife of screenlands and pantingly eager to watch the stars making whoopee in gorgeously draped and sinfully vibrant cafes are not merely disappointed, they are stunned. Hollywood Boulevard after 10 o'clock at night is one of the quietest streets in the world. According to the official police records and the investigations of experts, Hollywood is one of the most law-abiding communities in America. It has its scandals, of course, but they are few in number compared to the hundreds of scandals occurring in other cities and towns. The newspapers obviously are to blame for the false ideas concerning Hollywood, yet in a sense, are they to blame? If the public did not hunger for scandal, would the newspapers contain so much of it? Contrast the type of readers who enjoy the decent fan magazines with the type who allow coffee to get cold and unwashed dishes to pile up in the sink while they pour over sensational filth in the newspapers. The reputable fan magazines have capable representatives living in Hollywood who are in daily touch with the motion picture people, whereas the average newspaper writer has only sketchy knowledge of real conditions. When he writes, he draws upon his imagination. With heartbreaking frequency, the newspapers run headlines such as Hollywood actress commits suicide, motion picture director shoots actress. Wild Hollywood Cafe Orgy ends in tragedy. But when the names of those involved are read, it is found that the suiciding actress was in reality some floater who worked two or three days as an extra before going back to the lunch counter or the department store from which she came. The motion picture director who shot the actress was some hanger-on who, ten years ago, directed a two-reeler on Poverty Row. And the actress was someone who played as an extra in a mob scene of The Birth of a Nation, or Bill Hart's first western. The wild Hollywood cafe orgy in which someone was stabbed took place in a cheap restaurant on the fringes of Hollywood, and the studio people involved were prize fighters and their friends who once worked in the fight scenes of pictures. Why do the newspapers write such headlines? Because the heading, Waitress Commits Suicide, does not interest the public, but Hollywood Actress Commits Suicide. Ah, how the dear public will feast its eyes. Furthermore, nearly every petty crook, low-class brawler, inmate of a $40 a month love nest, and cheap gin party disturber of the peace when arrested blandly gives his or her profession as pictures. They hope to receive transitory prestige and much publicity by the subterfuge. They do, and the public says, my, those picture people, ain't they disgraceful? No, Johnny, I can't mend your shirt tonight, I've got to finish this piece about the Hollywood scandal. Nellie Ravel of Variety, the official weekly trade paper of the entire show business, writes that she found more truly happily married couples in the picture colony than in any other place in which she had lived. Nellie has seen and knows intimately more places than the average writer will ever see. She knows the show people and she is one of the finest women in the world. Her knowledge of actors and actresses and her ability to judge human nature are surpassed only by the beauty of her character. Of course, the divorces in Hollywood are so widely and so luridly publicized that mere outsiders hardly can be blamed for supposing that divorce is the favorite sport of Screenland. However, if you will procure a list of bankers, businessmen, etc., and study their percentage of divorce, you will find that this percentage greatly exceeds the rate of picture divorces. A very amusing incident will illustrate a certain attitude of mind toward Hollywood. One afternoon, the author was standing in line in a certain large cafe and candy shop on Hollywood Boulevard, waiting to pay her check, 55 cents to be exact. At her side was standing a tall, thin, sour-looking man dressed in dingy black, the cut of whose suit and the shape of whose hat were strongly reminiscent of the Civil War. In the lapel of his coat was a button or a pin, and the author, being curious, said, "'Pardon me, but would you mind telling me what that button stands for? It seems rather unique.' Well, that pin stands for the so-and-so Bible Association, but I don't suppose you Hollywood people ever heard of the Bible, was his charming answer. Henry's Cafe. 
Meet Me at Henry's is heard every day and every evening in Hollywood. This cafe is the place where everyone feels at home, where everyone says hello to everyone else, where the stars, the directors, the scenario writers, the cameramen, the celebrities, the property men, the cutters meet their friends, drop in for a cup of coffee, and one of Henry's famous sandwiches tell their newest jokes, discuss contracts, hear the latest Hollywood rumors, exchange banter and repartee with one another, with Henry the owner, and with Harry Berliner, the jovial, smiling manager. Every evening, Charlie Chaplin is there. Henry is Charlie's best friend and frequently plays big parts in his pictures. At several tables sit famous men and women in evening clothes. At others are electricians, property boys, etc. in their shirt sleeves, actors and actresses still wearing makeup, just arrived from hard work at the studios. Henry is like a character from the pages of a medieval book. Jolly, redolent of friendliness and unfailing kindness, always ready to joke, never undignified, scholarly but unassuming. A man who whom Hollywood loves, and a man who loves Hollywood. The Montmartre is the luncheon rendezvous of the stars. At night, an excellent orchestra furnishes dance music for the graceful feet of Screenland. At this cafe, evening dress is the mode, although there is an informal coffee shop downstairs below the main cafe. The Montmartre is a gay, charming place, and is very popular with the studio folk. The Double Eagle is one of the newer cafes of Hollywood. It is owned and managed by one of the Tsar's former generals. This cafe is well patronized by motion picture people, especially the Russian colony. There are many places outside of Hollywood where the stars dine and dance, notably Coconut Grove at the Ambassador Hotel and the Wilshire, Biltmore, Beverly Hills, and Mayfair Hotels, etc.